Chapter One of Zanzibar Tales. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sherry Vance. Zanzibar Tales by George W. Bateman. The Monkey, the Shark, and the Washerman's Donkey. Once upon a time, Kima, the Monkey, and Papa, the Shark, became great friends the monkey lived in an immense nkuyu tree which grew by the margin of the sea half of its branches being over the water and half over the land every morning when the monkey was breakfasting on the kuyu nuts the shark would put in an appearance under the tree and call out throw me some food my friend with which request the monkey complied most willingly this continued for many months until one day papa said kima you have done me many kindnesses i would like for you to go with me to my home that i may repay you how can i go said the monkey we land beasts cannot go about in the water don't trouble yourself about that replied the shark i will carry you not a drop of water shall get to you oh all right then said mr kima let's go when they had gone about half way the shark stopped and said you are my friend i will tell you the truth why what is there to tell asked the monkey with surprise well you see the fact is that our sultan is very sick and we have been told that the only medicine that will do him any good is a monkey's heart well exclaimed kima you were very foolish not to tell me that before we started how so asked papa but the monkey was busy thinking up some means of saving himself and made no reply well said the shark anxiously why don't you speak oh i've nothing to say now it's too late but if you had told me this before we started i might have brought my heart with me what haven't you your heart here huh ejaculated kima don't you know about us when we go out we leave our hearts in the trees and go about with only our bodies but i see you don't believe me you think i'm scared come on let's go to your home where you can kill me and search for my heart in vain the shark did believe him though and exclaimed oh no let's go back and get your heart indeed no protested kima let us go on to your home but the shark insisted that they should go back get the heart and start afresh at last with great apparent reluctance the monkey consented grumbling sulkily at the unnecessary trouble he was being put to when they got back to the tree he climbed up in a great hurry calling out wait there papa my friend while i get my heart and we'll start off properly next time when he had got well up among the branches he sat down and kept quite still after waiting what he considered a reasonable length of time the shark called come along kima but kima just kept still and said nothing in a little while he called again oh kima let's be going at this the monkey poked his head out from among the upper branches and asked in great surprise going where to my home of course are you mad queried kima mad why what do you mean cried papa what's the matter with you said the monkey do you take me for a washerman's donkey what peculiarity is there about a washerman's donkey it is a creature that has neither heart nor ears the shark his curiosity overcoming his haste thereupon begged to be told the story of the washerman's donkey which the monkey related as follows a washerman owned a donkey of which he was very fond one day however it ran away and took up its abode in the forest where it led a lazy life and consequently grew very fat at length sungura the hare by chance passed that way and sapunda the donkey now the hare is the most cunning of all beasts if you look at his mouth you will see that he is always talking to himself about everything so when sungura saw punda he said to himself my this donkey is fat then he went and told simba the lion 
as simba was just recovering from a severe illness he was still so weak that he could not go hunting he was consequently pretty hungry said mr sungura i'll bring enough meat to-morrow for both of us to have a great feast but you'll have to do the killing all right good friend exclaimed simba joyfully you're very kind so the hare scampered off to the forest found the donkey and said to her in his most courtly manner miss punda i am sent to ask your hand in marriage by whom simpered the donkey by simba the lion the donkey was greatly elated at this and exclaimed let's go at once this is a first-class offer they soon arrived at the lion's home were cordially invited in and sat down sungura gave simba a signal with his eyebrow to the effect that this was the promised feast and that he would wait outside then he said to punda i must leave you for a while to attend to some private business you stay here and converse with your husband that is to be as soon as sungura got outside the lion sprang at punda and they had a great fight simba was kicked very hard and he struck with his claws as well as his weak health would permit him at last the donkey threw the lion down and ran away to her home in the forest shortly after the hare came back and called hiya simba have you got it i have not got it growled the lion she kicked me and ran away but i warrant you i made her feel pretty sore although i'm not strong oh well remarked sungura don't put yourself out of the way about it then sungura waited many days until the lion and the donkey were both well and strong when he said what do you think now simba shall i bring you your meat ay growled the lion fiercely bring it to me i'll tear it in two pieces so the hare went off to the forest where the donkey welcomed him and asked the news you were invited to call again and see your lover said sungura oh dear cried punda that day you took me to him he scratched me awfully i'm afraid to go near him now ah pshaw said sungura that's nothing that's only simba's way of caressing oh well said the donkey let's go so off they started again but as soon as the lion caught sight of punda he sprang upon her and tore her in two pieces when the hare came up simba said to him take this meat and roast it as for myself all i want is the heart and the ears thanks said sungura then he went away and roasted the meat in a place where the lion could not see him and he took the heart and ears and hid them then he ate all the meat he needed and put the rest away presently the lion came to him and said bring me the heart and ears where are they said the hare what does that mean growled simba why didn't you know this was a washerman's donkey well what's that to do with there being no heart or ears for goodness sake simba aren't you old enough to know that if this beast had possessed a heart and ears it wouldn't have come back the second time of course the lion had to admit that what sungura the hare said was true and now said kima to the shark you want to make a washerman's donkey of me get out of there and go home by yourself you are not going to get me again and our friendship is ended good-bye papa end of chapter one